Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening out there, depending on where you're at. It is the Earthmaster here on this Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. It's about 11.53 here, California time in the a.m. Latest activity? Well, let's see what we got here across the globe. Looks like a 3.3 hiding out here somewhere up in Alaska, potentially. I see a green flag up there. Um, let's see what we got. There's going to be that three-pointer down there across the Java Trench. We'll check out the West Coast activity here first, see what's going on in California. We did have a little shaker out here near the Parkfield area earlier this morning, a 3.5 coming in about 6 o'clock. As folks may be getting up uh, ready to go to work, not a whole lot of population density out here along the, the uh, creeping segment, but I'm sure a few folks did fill it. About 8 kilometers deep there for that earthquake. Now, the creeping segment is a little section here that extends uh, a little bit up north and some south as well. Uh, it's an area along the plate boundary that kind of separates the more locked area up north and, of course, the more locked area down south, the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault. And here's just a little segment of it or a little image showing you that uh, area. Uh, creeping section separates the locked areas north and south of this region. Uh, the Parkfield section is a transition zone between uh, between the creeping and the southern locked section. So definitely can see some large earthquakes north and south of here. And occasionally we do get some uh, uh, earthquakes as well around the 6.0 or so. It uh, looks like about every 22 years uh, they've kind of um, figured out an occurrence level, uh, reoccurrence level of earthquake activity out here across this segment. And the last one there, uh, I believe, was back in 2006, if I remember right. So maybe getting ready to uh, see some further earthquake activity out here. If it's got that regular um, occurrence level coming in about 22 years or so. Either way, take a look at the West Coast. Uh, aside from that, generally small microquake activity out here across the area. I don't think we've seen anything, uh, well... Uh, we did see a three-pointer up here around Lake Pillsbury and a 2.6 a little bit further down south in the Los Angeles area uh, earlier this morning. But uh, for the most part, all of this activity here that you see on the map is generally small microquake activity. And uh, really not a whole lot of swarming going on here. Uh, not a whole lot of interest currently taking place here in terms of elevated activity. I'm still seeing some movement out here across the Utah area uh, up against the mountain ranges here. I think that's... Uh, uh, this area that's probably um, maybe creating some new uh, new pads out here, so to speak. These look like um, there's some type of electrical grid out here, solar farm, so to speak. There's a lot of uh, solar panels out here, and uh, there's just been a pretty good cluster of earthquake activity here recently. Here's the last week of activity, uh, mostly confined to this region. So whatever's going on here at the surface level or just below the surface level is... Uh, associated with the operations out here it is very close to this one pad it looks like a new construction pad out there uh, 154 earthquakes are being produced in this area in the last week so uh definitely some some interesting activity we'll continue to watch that though uh backing out of here got uh texas out here showing a little bit of movement but overall the rest of the eastern portion of the country fairly quiet uh, up into the Yellowstone area super volcano. I don't think we got anything major going on there, but we'll double check just to be sure. Here's the latest overview of Yellowstone National Park. Seismograph stations here show uh, a handful of small, very small quakes. These are probably below the 0.5 threshold, uh, literally half of a 1.0 magnitude range. So uh, not a whole lot going on. Otherwise, we would see it across the park and it would show up uh, very nicely with those seismograph stations working. Uh, let's see, backing out of here. Anything uh, else major going on here across the area? Looks like Hawaii seeing a, a few earthquakes up here. Around the Big Island, not a whole lot of movement here across the Pahala or the um, Kilauea volcano area. Uh, we've seen uh, some deeper movement quakes here in the Pahala area, though, as far as the. Um, the latest informational statement here. We'll double check that, see if the USGS has put that out. I'm sure they have. It's noon California time, so I'm sure they uh, 
probably have it out here. Let's double check that and see. Uh, the volcano obviously not erupting and the latest update was put out today. Low to moderate rates of seismicity look like they continue around the fault systems there southwest of the summit um, due to uh, magma being displaced from the summit area off to this area of the southwest rift zone. So uh, things just kind of sitting down there still. Really no major changes going on here across the Kilauea volcano. We'll give a quick glance here at the seismograph stations and uh, just take a peek at uh, what's going on here. We'll back out. And uh, this area of interest uh, is sitting down right about here where that magma has been displaced. So just been kind of watching some seismic activity out here. It's been relatively quiet. There's a handful of smaller quakes here as you can see on the map. Um, but generally there's, you know, not a whole lot of elevated activity. I don't know why it's still doing that. UWE station out here shows that we are going up a little bit. Um, let me bring up the, uh, UWE station here. I know I have it. I'm missing over it. I'm skipping over it here. Oh, right here. <laughs> Yeah, 219, uh, here's the current area of interest for today. Uh, so still not a whole lot of inflation going on. We're getting some slow rises here, but uh, when that magma got displaced from the summit off to the southwest rift zone, that showed a noticeable relief there at the summit. Um, and we're not you know, anywhere near what we were at in terms of inflation there across that region. So we're just kind of watching this. Uh, seeing how it will play out either way. Some gradual inflation taking place there across the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, we do have an earthquake down there in the South Sandwich Trench coming in in the last hour, it looks like, 4.9. Uh, this follows some movement yesterday with some movement uh, way up north. So we've got one down south now. What that means is we need to watch areas in between here for some further movement. This is a very, it's a small subduction zone area, but it's, uh, you can almost watch these quakes in somewhat predictability uh, as they pop up from time to time. You'll see which areas may be due next in terms of uh, some further adjustment. And I think we'll see some further activity uh, within this zone here between the two. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there in terms of earthquake activity. Um... New Zealand area. What do we got down here? Looks like a couple smaller quakes. Most of the movement here uh, looks like it is north of the area into the uh, Kermadec Trench region where we did see some activity stirring up out here in the last 24 hours. One from yesterday and a couple from today. Mostly deep earthquakes here across the area. So we'll continue to watch for some adjustment across the plate boundary there at the surface levels. One earthquake out off the plate boundary here looks like a 5.5 coming in four o'clock this morning they're popping a guinea uh, aside from that as i mentioned last night it's fairly quiet in terms of uh you know any large-scale movement here there's always earthquake activity always twos and threes popping off here on the globe that is you know very common on any given day but we're not noticing any major elevated uh movement taking place out here for now perhaps we'll get a large solar flare to Maybe create uh, a little bit of elevated conditions out here, but till then we'll uh, watch uh, watch for some movement. A uh, little bit of activity up here across eastern Afghanistan and up into the area of China. A lot of this though from yesterday, so you know, kind of adds on to the quietness of the day. Uh, Puerto Rico, uh, a couple earthquakes here this morning, and then a, a mix from yesterday as well. So just a little little bit of movement down there. 3.3 coming in here across the strait. Uh, that's the latest quake there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Iceland here, see if we've got any major movement going on up there. I don't think so because we're still waiting for some earthquake activity to pop off here across the rift zones north and south there across the divergent boundaries. Uh, and then we'll see things probably kick back up here across Iceland. But right now, just very, very minimal earthquake activity talking about 14 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours so really not a whole lot going on uh, let's see if they put out a update here on their uh, website this was put out uh, yeah this was put out yesterday it looks like it 
um, updated hazard map here. Uh, model calculations suggest magma accumulation will reach similar levels as was noted prior to the last eruption by the end of this month or beginning of March. So looks like things are, you know, still obviously swelling. Um, here is the latest hazard map here, it looks like. this Again, this was updated uh, yesterday. Uh, it looks like... Uh, within zone seven here, which is down here. Um, looks like they added the potential for fault movements and sinkholes. Uh, and for the most part, the general areas to watch are gonna be here, Grindavik northeastward in the orange zones, uh, which still, you know, obviously could take place here uh, in the weeks ahead. Let's go ahead and check out the inflation activity out there, see if we got anything elevated going on um where is the savart singi area let's just check the eight hour run see what's going on here across some of these seismograph stations this is all or not seismograph stations but these um these gps monitoring stations here here's the grandivik here's one that was offline uh, following the eruption back there the magma actually rolled over that uh that uh, data reading GPS station, so that's why it's offline. But the most current image here of one that is working still shows some elevated activity. I know we were looking at a little period of leveling off, uh, but yeah, we're definitely still showing some elevated activity here uh, in terms of the vertical displacement, the upward movement, and that tells us right there that things are continuing to inflate. Uh, but again, watch for some key activity there in the um the atlantic ocean i think that's when we'll see, see things uh, further escalate right now it's been very quiet out here i don't even know if we've had any earthquake activity here in the last week we haven't look at that nothing showing up here above 4.5 and uh that's fairly quiet for now across the atlantic ocean that's a little on the odd side but i'm sure it will pick up all right space weather activity we do have a giant sunspot here uh 30 590 right here see if we can get this to key up 3590 fairly massive sunspot region out there on the north eastern quadrant of the sun there's the magnetogram image from last night let's see if we got any complexity going on here it does look like it wants to uh come together so to speak in terms of complexity it's when these sunspots separate and go away from each other is when they start to degrade degrade uh, but we'll see if we can't get some complexity going on here within that massive sunspot region, which could enhance the uh, potential for some solar flaring here in the days ahead. Right now, 99% uh, chance for a C flare, M flare at 30, X flare around 5% chance or so. Uh, current aurora forecast, very minimal. But again, hopefully we can get that to change with, a, you know, maybe a decent X flare. Well, maybe even a large M flare would... Uh, with a subsequent CME would be effective in terms of helping us out there seeing maybe some auroras in the forecast, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. It does look like it's growing uh, in complexity, so we'll keep that in mind and watch for some flaring. Far as severe weather goes out here, looks like some marginal risk for some severe w uh, weather. Nothing major in terms of tornado activity, just maybe a little bit of hail falling out of the sky there uh, in these brown areas in the 5% zone. But uh, overall, it doesn't look like we have anything major going on in terms of severe weather outbreaks. As far as the numerical models go, this gives us a good indicator of what's going on here with precipitation. There's some of that activity that may stir up today out here across portions of the Midwest. Uh, West Coast out here, we got a couple days of drying out. Uh, I'm not against that because uh, we did get quite a bit of rain here. And, uh, you know, the, the ground can only soak up so much moisture when it's dumping rain here. We almost had like three inches of rain, um, not yesterday, but the day before, in, in one day. And it was pretty crazy. Still have a lot of standing water out here, so that tells you how soaked the ground is. Uh, but it looks like maybe our next storm system coming down out of the north, bringing with it a lot of cold air. So that's good for the snowpack. Not a whole lot of precipitation, and that's going to kick up here roughly monday into tuesday of next week and long-term models here does show a return 
of some warmer wetter systems out here to California as we begin the March period here. Looks like the first week of March uh, could be quite wet. And, uh, you know, by then we should have a lot of the standing water gone. So we'll take a little bit more rain out here in California. Uh, again, I don't see any major severe weather setups out here. Um, you know, a lot of this colder air interacting with the warmer air, that could create some severe weather as we head towards the end of the month. We'll have to watch that, though. Um, and that looks like mainly across areas of the Midwest region. But uh, that's a little far out. We'll continue to watch that, though, and report back on anything that uh, changes out there. All right, folks, I got to get busy. Got a lot of school stuff I got to do today. Uh, so I'll be out here on the side just kind of watching things here. Hope everyone has a good Wednesday, and we will catch you guys back here uh, a little bit later tonight for the nightly update. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a new watcher. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later. Take care.